They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by... The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come back home to Stanford. L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Woods Equipment Company. Has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Well, hello, Miss Nikki. Hello. Out on the patio. You know what? A little change of scenery. About time. We wanted to come out here for a long time, but we've had a lot of issues coming up with weather. Right. And we're getting a little work done out here, but don't you like the sound of nature I, in the background? I do, I do. Now, let me tell you what's going on today. We hope we can make this show happen. It's coming. Before that big black cloud comes over. We set up today to do the show down here because summer's right around the corner. That's right. We're going to start doing some grilling. Yay. You know... The thing is, tonight's show is about beef. Now, we've seen this particular cut of beef. Let's go back to our cutting up of beef video. And if you hear animals in the background, <laughs> there are animals back there. They're very wet and muddy. Yes, they but are. Why don't they go in their houses? I don't know. They like it. we got these huge, wonderful houses. And a barn. And a barn. They don't go in it. And guess what? They look like mud puppies. Yes, they do. <laughs> but here we are with this flank steak or strip steak. Now, you can see the grain in this meat. Everybody does this different. We like to marinate ours for a little while. It'll help soften that meat up just a little bit. Right. This is a very good tasting cut of meat. It can be a little hard. It can be a little tough, and you never want to cut it you know, okay. with the grain. You always go against the grain. Speaking of beef, we're going to have our own beef shortly. Yay. Take a look at here. Now, tonight, you're going to see, you're going to see for the first time, our new cow and calf. Hmm. They're coming out here. Now, the whole idea is in the real world, we know that that is part of a cow. Right. We don't make apologies for the fact that we eat meat. That's part of what we do. And it's good. People have been doing it for at least 100 years. Right, at least. So <laughs> we, are, we do eat meat. We raise sheep. We raise things. We do as much as we can here on our property. Right. And we're going to beef it up a bit. Okay. And we're going to have a cow and a calf. Yay. And I would like to, if we can, every year raise at least one calf for okay. us, maybe two. And we're going to find out how to do that in just a little while. But... We're going to try to outrun this storm. Now, we're going to make some guacamole and let it go ahead and set it in the refrigerator. And okay. it's so easy to make. People, a lot of times, to me, there's way too many onions in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the onions are raw. So we're going to have some sweet yellow onions that we're going to put in this. And we're going to cut up these avocados. And you want to make sure they're ripe. You can tell that these are. And we're going to take these three and make a very simple, quick, delicious, fresh guacamole to have with our fajitas yeah. when they're done. Guacamole is truly easy, easy to make. And it's delicious and it's good for you. We're gonna do probably for us, you know what, let's do three. We're gonna take three avocados and make a pretty good little amount here. Now, everything we're doing, you could do this over the campfire, cowboy campfire cooking, all that kind of stuff. But tonight, I wanna have that grilled taste. Yum. I want that steak to be grilled. I'm gonna do it on very hot temperature Okay. Because I want that steak to be tender in the middle. We yeah. like rare. Yeah, we do. So, back to the guacamole. All right, we're going to cut, if I had to guess, that's, that's a medium-sized onion. We're going to use less than a quarter of that. Now, that's just me. I'm going light on the onions here. We're going to cut them up very, very small. All right, so we have three avocados, probably a quarter of a medium-sized onion. 
Now we're gonna take this mixture and some cumin, and we're gonna put a dash of cumin in here. And if I had to guess, that's probably, oh, half a teaspoon or so. Now we're gonna take some cilantro and we're gonna put it in a food processor and cut up really fine. Good. Moses doesn't like that. Mm -hmm. Now what we're gonna do, let's might as, might as well go ahead and mix everything. Let's take a tomato, split that in half. Let's just scoop out the, the seeds in the middle. We're just gonna use the meaty part of that. If you used a big beefsteak tomato or something like that, it would be mushy. These kind of, the Romas, which we like to can, they hold up a little bit better. Now, if you want to, go ahead and just mush that all together. Mush? I like mush. Mush it. If you will, Nikki, while I'm mushing, take a lime over there, okay. cut it in half. Let's put some lime juice in here. Now, at the very last, we're gonna take a little bit of salt. Try to spread that evenly throughout that. Oops, that's good. Now, you notice we're not measuring. We're not putting that much of anything in there. Just a tad. Just a little bit of, little bit of garlic. Can I taste? Mmm. Yep. Good. You like? Mm-hmm. Now that took what? Every bit of five minutes? I could just eat that with a spoon. Yum. Wow. Oh, ma'am. That's really good. Mm. Forget making dinner. Let's mm. just get Let's some tortilla chips okay. and just eat it. Mm. Oh, mm. Mm. wow. Mm. That's good. We're going to set this aside, put it in the fridge, and hope that big black cloud doesn't get us. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take and prepare our marinade. Now, this is going to be a six to eight hour process, generally. You can let it go overnight. Let's just go ahead and figure, I don't know, let's do three cloves of garlic. Let's put this in the food process okay. and make life easier on us. Lime juice. Okay. You can go ahead and squeeze in there. So let's go ahead and take some cilantro, okay. a goodly amount. And let's put that in the food processor as well. And I would say, if I had to guess, how about a double handful plus just a hair more? Because I okay. really like that cilantro taste coming out. You like that too, don't you? I do. We're going to put some cumin in here. And if I had to guess, it's probably about a tablespoon of that. A little bit of salt, a few fresh green onions, I guess you could call them. How about some hot sauce? Here's something I discovered a while back. One of my favorite hot sauces of all time. We're gonna put a little tad of that in there. And this is, just happens to be cougar bait. I wanna put some of that yeah. in here. That is our marinade. Very simple, isn't it? Yeah. Nothing to it. Let's put that in our gallon bag. Drop this in. Mm -hmm. Seal it. And really going to give that a good shake, let it mix up. And if you're around, if you are around, you can lift it up in the refrigerator every now and then, turn it over, mix it up, let it set. But that's really going to give that a nice taste. Okay, let's set that aside. All right, you like where we're going? I do. It smells good, everything. I could eat that guac every single bite of it right I might, now. I might have to have a little bite of that while we're waiting. Well, fajitas are on their way. Guacamole's already done. We're going to marinate. But then we're going to go to Casey County, like right now. Are you anxious to meet our new members yeah, of the Yeah, I want to farm? see when they come in. Very soon. Yay. So let's go to Casey County, meet up with Todd, and talk about his particular way that he's doing cattle. We're in Casey County. I love Casey County. Some of the friendliest people I've ever met are in Casey County. I'm not kidding you. This is Todd Harn. Now, we're out here today on your beautiful farm. Good time of year. It's gorgeous. Good time of year. You know, we're out here for a reason today. First of all, we've been talking on the phone. We finally met. I wanted a cow. Mm -hmm. I talked to Donald Tartar. Donald's getting us started. He's kind of letting me know, okay, he came and looked at my property and said, you need to do this, you need to do that. He said, I'm going to find you somebody that's got a cow. That's the next step. Now, there's a lot involved in here. You don't just say, hey, I want a cow, and you put it in the yard and let it rip. That's right. There's a lot to it. And I'm gonna ask you questions about that today and we're gonna follow up later at the house. But the reason we're here today is because we're gonna visit the cow and the calf that mm -hmm. I'm about to purchase. We're gonna bring back up on my place. First of all, let's talk about the fact that you're doing something unique here. This isn't your typical, this is your creation right. for the most part. Tell right. us about what you're trying to do with the black Ang Angus and, and the, the old milk cow over there. Sure. All right, in 2011, Tim, I liquidated my cow herd 
had 34 black Angus cows. Took a um, little extra money I had out of that and bought bi five brown Swiss cows. Now, why brown Swiss? Okay, one, brown Swiss was cheaper mm -hmm. because they were a dairy breed. Number two, I was using them as nurse cows. So I was putting multiple calves on each cow. I would go to the stockyard, local stockyard over in Camelsville, and purchase calves that were pulled off of maybe some old cows or what they call downer cows, cows that's on their last leg. And I would buy that baby calf and graft it on to that cow. So that first year of having five brown Swiss nurse cows, I was able to raise probably somewhere between 25 and 30 calves that year because I would keep the calves on for three months, take those calves off, put a new group of calves on. I would get three rotations oh, wow. per milk cycle. It's how I started my base herd. So I took the brown Swiss cows, crossed them with a black Angus bull, and started from there, basically working towards an animal that's got plenty of frame, plenty of milk, very docile. And I'm taking that, now my goal is, is just to get the meat added back to that frame. It's working so far. I'm enjoying it, having a good time, doing a lot of artificial insemination on these cows. I do that myself and um, have enjoyed it, so it's kind of neat. Being that I have sheep, mm -hmm. and there'll be some times when I'll probably introduce those together and let those roam around. Now sheep really graze sure. things down, so I've got different areas where I can move everybody around. Um, but what Donald recommended for what I'm gonna do is a, do a more docile animal. Mm -hmm. And with that, with what you have here, you know, I've already touched her on the nose. Right. You know, you have to get to know your cattle. Sure. They have to be careful with you and all that. Sure. But I want something that I can move around, not have to worry about running me in the ground. Right. This to me is, and I've talked to a lot of people who are, who are talking about your, your, your milk cow there mm -hmm. who say that's their favorite cow to eat. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Sure. Okay. I've got a jersey up here that I'm fattening. Gotcha. And I'll tell you why, Tim. I could buy probably three jerseys for what one of these black calves is going to sell for at the stockyard. I can go and buy the jersey breed. Yes, they're not going to have quite as much meat that you're going to get as far as the way they're going to cut out. They're not going to cut out quite as much, but the quality and the taste is just, I don't know, it's, it's better than Angus to me as far as taste, and I, I almost hate for that to be on camera, <laughs> but it is the truth because uh, there's probably some Angus people right now that uh, that might have clicked the station off. but. I, I've been fattening a Jersey calf every year and uh, grain fed. I'm not a grass fed person. Um, I like the flavor that the grain brings to the to the meat. Yes, the grass fed is more like eating deer. Um, it's it's probably healthier, but I just soon die a year too early eating something. Can you do I enjoy. a combination of that? Can you give them some? You know, let them eat grass and then give probably, them some. Probably can. Yeah. Yes, and I'm not pushing. I'm not pushing like a feedlot would. I'm not pushing. Um, but he'll have pretty much all the all the grain he wants, just ground ear corn and some distiller's grain, right. something like that, good mineral. Um, you say she's trained one wire, so I can mm -hmm. probably put a very minimal sure. expense yes. in that fence. Yes. Now, I've got to get me a good unit where I can mm -hmm. you know, keep her in, and you say she needs a pretty good zap. Yes. So she's like, is that thing on or off? Right. You don't want her, you don't want her go in there. Right. I don't want, yeah, I wouldn't want her. She's been running uh, this field you can see in the background along the fin along the wood line, there is one strand of electric wire that I just put an electric box on because of those calves. Right. The cows stayed in, the calves are wanting to get out. So I just bought a solar powered unit from Southern States and right. put on there two or three weeks ago just to keep the calves in. How long is it going to take this little guy? You said you said at any point you can eat this animal, sure. but ideally, if I'm wanting to really put a bunch of meat in the freezer for mm -hmm. the winter, when do you think would be an ideal time, and what should I shoot for weight-wise to get him up to before I eat him? I think you need to. I think you need to kind of target around 600 pounds, at least get to 600. Right. One, the cow will have no problem supporting that animal, supporting that calf to get it to 600 pounds, milking as much as she's going to. There'll be no problem there in that six, 650 range. If you want to pull it off and just and finish it a little bit on feed, you could do that. But we, as, as uh, kids, we used to kill a milk-fed calf right off the cow every year, and you can't beat the taste, and it'll be tender enough to cut it with a fork. Now me, mm -hmm. hobby farmer, I want to raise one a year for me. Okay. All right, what do I need to think about to take care of that, that cow? What do I need to look out for? What kind of shots do we need? Mm -hmm. what, does, what, does, what are some things that we're really gonna to have to watch out for? You'll have different opinions about this. My, my brood cows, um, I usually just give them an IBR shot, which is a respiratory 
virus inoculation, keep them from getting some respiratory issues, and then I use a dewormer. That's all they need. Um, you can change ear tags if you need. You know, if ear tag comes out, you can put a new ear tag in, but it's, as far as anything additional, nothing needed there. For the calf, black leg, an IBR shot, I'll take care of the castrating him before he comes to you. Thank you very much. Yes, and deworming him maybe a couple times, okay? The worms are just gonna rob him from his growing capabilities. Right. Um, anything, anytime there's How worms. How often will I have to do that once, once it's taken care of here? At about maybe 300 pounds or so, and then maybe again at maybe 500 pounds, and they actually make some that you can just add to feed. Oh, good. So no shot needed on Very that. Good. So that'd be no problem for you there. One of the one of your one of your biggest concerns is going to be getting this cow bred back here in a couple months. Explain that to those who might not. Okay, you want your cow to calve basically every year. So sometime around April next year, you want you want another calf on the ground because you're going to eat this other one up right. and need another one. So that's what you need to focus on here. Um, sometime in June, we need to be looking at getting a bull, getting to introduce that cow to. So you can do one of two things, take the cow and calf to the bull, or bring a bull, put it in there with the cow and calf. Leave it in there for 45 days, heat cycle on that cow, uh, 21 days. Every 21 days they're gonna come and heat. That bull will pull that cow in heat. It's a natural thing. That'll be your next biggest challenge is getting her bred back. Gotcha. Um, and get ready for next year's calf. Let's take a walk and look at some heritage. Sure. Scare, woo, so come on. When called correctly, they cannot resist it. They're going to come running. <laughs> Look at them. Yeah. Come on, girls. Yeah, come in here. So here's one of my foundation cows, okay, 901. That means she was born in 2009. The other brown Swiss coming up back there, that she's got that red calf there. That, that is one, that's a twin. Her other twin calf is in the, in the lot. I went ahead and pulled one calf off. Now that calf will get all the milk. The other one will will be on eat and feed. It's just amazing how yeah. you how you can take something and just custom fit to what That's you right, want. That's right, you can. Does it aggravate you that the process takes breeding cycles? Yes. Yeah. You wish takes you a year. It. Takes a year. <laughs> you're, you're, it don't matter. And no matter how well you like it, you can get a dud. This whole thing is so fascinating. Yeah. You know, there's uh, there's going to be a little bit of a break here. I have I have to do this terrible. I got to go to Southern Florida and fish. I hate that for you. It's really terrible. Do. The things I have to do with this show just make me mad sometimes, Todd, but I've got to get through that. Once I struggle through that process, we do a little seafood cooking and a little stuff like that. It's terrible. We're going to come back, and then we're, you're coming up to the house. Right. I can't wait to actually have, you know, like I said, I'm not going to be a big operation. Sure. But I would like to get to the point eventually where I can milk a cow, too. Right. You know, and then have some milk for us, too. Yes. The whole thing's yep. just fascinating. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Not a problem. Not see, a problem. I see where you're going with this. Yep. Very interesting. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Family's enjoyed it. There's nothing like walking out here and seeing something that basically you've you've created. On your place. Yeah, on my place. That's, That's right. That's cool. That's right. All right, I'm heating up some oil. Like I want to get this good and hot, so okay. if you will... Cut me up some peppers and onions okay. in, in just strips. Slices? Yep. I've got my grill really hot. Now, I've got it up to about 500 degrees. Now, my plan here is to really get it hot on either side. I'm not going to leave it on there that long. I'm going to put this on this really hot grill, and it's going on. Listen to the sizzle. Yum. All right. If you will, go ahead and drop that in. You want all these onions or just a little bit? Yeah, let's go all of them. Now, we've all had fajitas, we've all had guacamole, but when it's fresh and it's outside, I'm telling you, there's some magic um, going on. You smell all this? Yes, I do. I wonder if all my Mexican friends would approve of this. I wonder if Naibi, and I wonder if Gabriel and Geraldo. You know what? I'm going to have to make this for them. You should have it like for it. dinner. See how legit we're doing here. A little chili powder, a little cumin, a little salt and pepper. Just enough to taste. Can you smell that? Oh, wow. I think my eyes water is so good. <laughs> Fresh. Yum. You That's love what fajitas. I'm going to have to do. i got to get my Mexican friends over here. Nibby is our friend. She made cowhead tacos. Take a mm -hmm. look at this. Take a look. Let's let's revisit our friend Nibby real quick, and let's talk about uh, a show we did in the past, cowhead tacos. So now the eyeball, what do we do with that? You chop it off. Okay. 
Set the eyeball down right there. Ah! What a rock and roll! And you just have the meat as much as as little as you want. And you put some onions. All right. And then you put as much as lime juice and as much as salsa you want. And then we're good to go. And then you're good to go. Mmm. Oh, I do like it. Mmm. <laughs> I'm really amazed more, more than anything about how much meat we got out of it. Out now, of the cow's head? Is this a good, a normal size cow head? Small, medium, That's small. Large? That's small? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have me another cow head taco and Nikki's over there looking like she might want one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now beef is going up. Now that's one reason we're thinking about raising our own. Plus, we know where it comes from. We know what we put in it. They're not gonna get any growth hormones. They're not gonna get any unnecessary antibiotics. That's almost done. I don't wanna get it too done. I put my tortillas on the grill here for just a minute to warm those up. Okay, ready? Ready. Look what a beautiful wow. piece of meat. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna cut the thin strips. As the rain starts to come down, <laughs> can we pull this off? I'm bringing the tortillas, which are rather warm, off the grill. This is Farmer. I could eat just this meat I like hope this. I we can pull this off. Oh, yum. Do you think we can beat the rain? Mm-hmm. Okay, drop that meat in here. Ready? Oh, the meat's delicious. Yeah. All right, let's get the, let's re-get the sizzle going. Now again, we're just gonna to toss this just for a minute because I don't wanna get that meat too done. A little more squeeze of lime. Let's do just a little more tad of salt. Okay. All right, now here's where we are. We might pull this off, Mrs. Farmer, if we rush. Okay. All right, I'm gonna fix this both one up here. Do you hear the sizzle? Yes, I do. Mm. Mm -hmm. We must hurry. You know, it, it looks dark out right now, but the reason we have lights up is because the sky is almost black. Yeah. So, guac and sour cream. Now, you could put some pico on there if you chose to do so, or some salsa. This is the way we like it, because that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, we like it. Oh, can you smell all that mm, freshness? Mm, mm, mm. You can put a little bit more guac on mine if you like. Can I? Now, look at that. Is that not beautiful? Sour cream, good. Sour cream is optional, whether you like that or not. I'd bet Naibi would tell me that that's not the way they do it back home, but, hmm. oh man, wow. look what a big, oh my goodness, these are huge. big honking. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Your meat's amazing. Mm. Oh. I think you're looking good. You can do this yourself. Something else you can do is go to our Facebook page and like it, see where we're going, what we're doing. Also check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. Hundreds and hundreds of shows. Right now, seriously, we gotta go because it's black. Good times. Good friends. Good eats. Gotta go. Ah! To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Housewarmings, Lodge Cast Iron, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is brought to you by Good Foods Co-op, Kentucky Sheep and Wool Producers Association and the Kentucky Goat Producers Association, Marksbury Farm Market, Weisenberger Mill, Your Village Shop, Diamond Gusset Jeans, the original gusset jean, careful craftsmanship, continual improvement, Diamond Gusset Jeans, born and worn in the USA since 1987.